Okay. Thank you, Chris, for starting the recording. So welcome back to uh, part two of our meeting, a continuation of our meeting. Um, so we'll go through the agenda. I, I do will tell you. All the following. Uh, what? So many people came over from this link working. Yes, I know. That's right. Well, that's why I expected. I was being courteous and saying anybody was here for that, but I knew full well nobody was here for it. Okay. was there for us. Um, but what I will say is I understand, you know, I know some people want to go see um, the waste of time. I mean, the debate tonight. So, uh, so uh, uh, we'll try to wrap up uh, within the hour so that you can uh, watch that. Um, okay. So first up on our non joint meeting agenda is the minutes or the minutes from last week. Did everybody have a chance to look those over? Yes. And I sent updates to Mr. Whitaker. Okay. Where, when did you send them today? Yeah. Okay. So I only looked uh, at it today. So you, okay. I did not get a chance to look at any updates. Here. Okay, so uh, so we'll postpone that. I guess you're going to make the okay. Well, I can tell you what I. Well, were they were they very extensive? No, right? no. Okay, okay. Then just, you can well, see. there were more than typos, but I just clarified a couple okay. of things. Okay. Um, Go ahead. On the fifteenth, I clarified that the governance committee mentioned that eighty percent of the towns reviewed by the oh. governance committee had finance committees that are appointed rather than elected. However, Dr. Shader noted that blah, 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 blah. So I just added a phrase, a sentence. Um, except that we passed those minutes last week. No, we didn't, did we? The 15th, yes. The only ones that we had outstanding are the 22nd. All right, I mean, fine. I think we did minutes last week. We did. That's why I just checked, I just checked the minutes from September 22nd to see if we did the minutes, because I thought we did. So right. yeah, the only one that's outstanding right now in the current meetings is the 22nd. So I also had one note on that one. Okay, so what was what was that? Let me pull it up. Sorry. That's okay. We're not on TV and we're not. Uh, we well, this will be people so. are going to go out there and watch it because it's so riveting. Um, under DPW, I clarified that the new wastewater treatment plant, the increased costs are due to materials and labor as well as additional items, including uh, building code changes, updates requiring two bathrooms, one for each gender. So currently. Okay. okay. We misunderstood, but it is, it's for two bathrooms. So was, just out of curiosity, do you happen to know if there was ever a plan for one bathroom? There is right now. So, no, no, I, I, so no, no, originally, the original plans had one bathroom in there. Okay. I misunderstood. I was to, until I get clarification, but now it's two bathrooms because we have to one, have one for each of the vendors. He's getting, he's asking for a waiver, right? Yes, and that's yeah, right. now, of course, and I have to, I have to ask really see see that uh, that that this, seems like a dope bathroom like because there's the always building. one bathroom not sufficient for both. In other words, like it's not it like you're doesn't, your yeah. and saying that's it's not it. like they have you a have volume in there. Who knows why the code says that? But that's what I guess the building code says. So from my conversation with Ben, it sounded like it was a reading of the uh, of the code by two different building inspectors. Oh, they just straddled two different yeah. building inspectors. The only reason I say that is because I know of commercial buildings, like office buildings, that have been intentionally built with only unisex bathrooms. But they still because, and then you avoid the whole transgender issue, right? It's but like, then they have two. Well, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying that. I don't know the code is, but I'm just. I'm not, I'm not saying to be a code expert, but I'm like the idea of saying you have to have a men's and a ladies, as opposed to a unisex, is is what I'm kind of confused. I uh, don't know. I know people. I know builders I are building unisex bathrooms now. Yes, and it makes no sense considering the volume of traffic that's going to happen, which is probably like one person going down there. So Once a week, yeah. If that, oh, wow. yeah. Okay, so you just clarified that it's for two bathrooms. And and, well, I also said materials and labor, in addition to the two bathrooms, it sounded like a million dollars for a bathroom was going to be outrageous the way okay. the minutes were written. Most of it is, is steel tariffs. Steel tariffs are raising prices. For yeah, sure. and I wanted I, a clarification. I'm waiting for that for materials and labor split. I, I talked with Ben about that because steel prices are not actually up. Does anything? In fact, they're actually down. So I just wanted. To, it's, oh. I, I suggested. No, these are these. I look. This is just generic steel pricing, not the actual like quotes from. You know, so there's a key Correct. Differences, but I said, can we just push them a little bit on this because this, at least the way I'm looking at it, it doesn't hold water that they're. they're you know, well, by, well, certainly me... by any kind of. So, so, so just to, for my own clarification, are you looking at like commodity steel prices? I'm looking at the, the commodity hot rolled oil, which is like base, base sort of yeah. generic. Right. And, and, no, and but, most but, of their steel is priced off of hot rolled oil prices. Right, right. But the, the reason I'm asking that is because 
does the commodity price presumably does not include the tariff. In other words, like if you, if you buy, a, no. hypothetically, if you buy a, a, a contract for hot steel or whatever, right, and then it's shipped from a Chinese supplier or something, do you? This is U.S. hot road coil that I was looking at. Right. So there shouldn't be any tariff on the purchase okay. of that. And in theory, what would happen is if a tariff is like $50, $50 a ton on, on Chinese steel, the price here wouldn't should in theory go up to meet the equilibrium there's a, there's a there's an arbitrage in some ways that you would be playing so so the price, no, the price that i was looking at should be the, what it doesn't include is freight and stuff like that i mean there, there are other constant and but right. well no no i just i just when you clarify that it was just to prove the minutes yeah but i i buy steel all the time and okay. the the type of steel i buy is really high quality steel and our steel we're buying um, actually U.S. steel, and it's cheaper. And we're buying recycled steel, and we're not paying tariffs. And I emailed oh. Travis, and I told him. So, that. how much are you paying relative to what you paid prior to the tariffs? Like, is it is the price way up or way down, or no? Is it no actually, I hate to say this: the tariffs are working. The U.S. steel prices are coming down. Of what we're yeah, that's my point. I just, I we, it, it okay. But anyway, okay. we are approving minutes. Yeah. So we yeah. I know. Well, well, I just wanted to know whether we. Yeah, I so told we know Ben to, to ask about that. And yeah, so I'll reach out to him tomorrow. Okay. So your so your only addition was to clarify the million for. Yeah, other... just so it doesn't sound like we're paying a million dollars for a bathroom. Okay. Hey, they sent a twenty-three million dollar toilet to the space station. So we are yeah, the government. Yeah, yeah we are the government. Well, let's okay. see. So if that's okay. the case, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes for so so, my second as amended. So moved. So second. second. Okay. Any further discussion on the minutes? Okay, then let's proceed to a vote. Mr. Alfred? Yes. Mr. Whitaker? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Zemer? Yes. Okay, good. So that's that's uh, it. I don't think there's any. Oh, you know. Uh, you need right. to vote then. Yes, and I vote yes. Okay. Um, but no, I was just thinking, I just realized I forgot to go to town and do that next week. I have that transfer that we need to do for. Uh, that I didn't go pick up the paperwork on. I totally forgot about that. So I'll pick that up for next week. Um, obviously, we don't have any updates from the town administrator per se, because he's at the select board meeting. Um, but Ms. Zemer, do you want to give the general or open session version of the status of the septic system? Yeah. Um, the, the reason the price went up is because there are contingencies now built into it. That's what okay. Travis Contingencies said. like what? Or is that all he said? Well, well, there, there, there are. I'll, 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 pull, I'll say it the right way, Michelle. Right? Yes. Um, there are various ways of implementing the new system. Yep. Some of which involve uh, negotiations with other parties. I see. Which is why we can't go into details. I see. But, but the, but the, what Travis would have said, and what I'm trying to paraphrase is that yes. they are looking at several options, and okay. they, the price may change because as they are negotiating certain things and looking at other options, um, it's it's changing the financial picture, which we'll get when they get more data. Okay. So, um, right. Other than that, I don't think- the range of prices. Yeah. So, um, uh, but the uh, the only other thing I think that, that Travis would have said, first of all, you saw he sent out the update on the CARES Act funding. It looks like they, obviously they didn't meet yet this week, so there's no update to the approved funding from the select board um there's still you know some money left in there for us for the guests through the rest of the year um the only other update i'd give everybody that he probably would have given is they're having the discussion you know the select board's going to have a discussion this evening about town meeting and when we're going to have it um i did confirm before our meeting with travis and with keith that it is not possible to have town meeting uh on school property during the week so Keith said, if we had town meeting on a Saturday, um, that we could we could probably have a town that we that would be okay because then they could sanitize the wherever we do it, or by in time for Monday or Friday night. Yeah. So Whoa. whatever. But but the but the the the, the bottom line is that uh, you know Keith did confirm that the 26 is going to be a, is going to be not possible on school property. Doesn't mean it's not possible, right? The select board will take care of other, if there are other options. But obviously the school property. A school well, property, either the high school or the cafetorium or whatever, um, wouldn't be possible for the 26th. So they were also banding about the 10th of because it's the day before Veterans Day. 
But, but you know, the 26th is always a bad day because of early voting anyway, the town clerk. Yep. Yeah. That was why they wanted to get away from the right, early but it, November. But it, it, it's in our bylaws. Except now that we can right. Except now we can violate the, the bylaws. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Which is which? By the way, I didn't ask this at the update for our legislators, but that's one thing I was going to ask them about. Although I figured they wouldn't have information. Is you know, as we get into quote unquote a new normal, right? Um, there really is no need for a lot of the early emergency actions that were taken. You know, for example, one twelfth budgeting, right? There should be no that that should be rescinded for FY22 if this COVID, right? There's no reason now that a town can't plan for a town meeting by next July 1, right? And can't figure out, you know, you have so, so to me, I was going to bring that up. Like, are you planning on rescinding some of these early emergency actions that are no longer going to be required just to make it clear that, you know, hey, when we get the budget. So anyway, so yeah, so we'll find out probably next week what the story is with town meeting because they'll decide tonight. Um, the other thing is, uh, uh, you know, the warrant is still scheduled to close on October 1st. So if that's the case, then we'll have a, you know, we'll have our warrant to talk about next week. So, okay. But that's, that's basically it. I think that's all Travis would have, uh, you know, all that he talked to me about pretty much during the week. Um, anybody have any liaison updates? I don't, you know, we didn't meet with the schools this week. I don't know if anybody else met with anybody. We should try to meet with them. Yeah, we should. We should. Obviously, you know, you know, the challenge has been the opening of schools, right? We had to wait till after they got schools reopened. Um, but, uh, oh, do yeah. They have, do they have any capital coming through? Uh, okay. Now, I, I won't say I'm quoting them, but the Keith said he doesn't expect them to have any capital. However, that is his opinion. The school committee has not, you know, formally come to the conclusion that they'll have no capital. Um, I know in the past we've heard that before and then mm -hmm. capital. So. But wasn't there some green community thing with the schools? I, I didn't have a chance to read it, but there was an email from from Travis. Let's turn it up. About oh, yeah, there, there, there may be some money he's looking for for some green community funds. That You're talking about the wall, the field house wall. Remember the famous field house wall that that Mark and John and all this were talking about a yeah. couple of years ago. But they applied for a green communities grant to fix that or to insulate it or do something, I guess, green related to it. Right. Um, kind of have to pitch in money for that. Yes. Is that for the That's, meeting? Right. Because what happened was when they applied for the green communities grant for it, they didn't properly cost it because they didn't think it was going to get funded. I mean, that's not an excuse, but I think if they just looked at it and said, oh, it'll be about this much. And put in and then it got funded. And so then they went out and they said, okay, what's it, what's it gonna take? And they, when they looked at it, it was, oh, it's gonna be more than what we asked for. So so the expectations we're gonna, you know, try, that's what Travis was hinting. We're gonna see something related to that because they got the grant and now they need a little more funding to complete the, you know, to do get the money they need to do it. But that's gonna be on this one, right? Yes, that's gonna be, that's gonna be something either gonna be, that's on Travis's list already, I think. Right. Okay, any other liaison updates? Mark or Vin, do you have any other than, no. other than the two toilets that you gave us already? Yep, that was about it. I'm still trying to get numbers clarifying okay. what's why it was a six hundred thousand dollar increase. Yeah. Okay. Um so the uh oh and there is one other thing I'll get back to. Actually this will be I'll, we'll talk about FY twenty one later. Um financial matters related to the COVID pandemic, obviously we don't have the chief here either, so uh Everybody knows that I think we're red now officially, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Another case today, we're up to 94, so we'll be red for a while. Yeah, we're going to be red, red for what? 94? Yep. Yeah. Wow. So, At the beginning of September or something, we were at 73, I think. Yeah. So, so the obviously, you get very limited information about the cases for privacy reasons, but the understanding that, that I have um, from the limited information that's available is that it is not related to the schools at this point. In other words, like the only case I don't know about is the one today. All the other ones were either that one uh, sort of. Uh, yeah, the chief of the facility that had an outbreak or that one uh, residence without any school age. Student. Right. So, so that's that's why I said we don't know the details, but the key thing for anybody who watches this later is that it's not school related. So uh, at the moment, at least, our case counts are not uh, being driven by a school reopening. Okay. Um, 
Any other issues? I don't think there's much to discuss pandemic related this week. Okay, so FY21 uh, budget. Uh, I think that we want to just spend a couple of minutes here just talking about, first of all, what you heard, but the other thing is you guys all got the email this week. Free cash has now been certified. Uh, it's north of $2 million. Um, you know, we have to start thinking about what the plan is. I think that, um, you know, if you comp I mean, we're in a good position from the point of view of we, we've got FY21 covered, so to speak. Yep. Um, you heard me say to our legislators that, you know, I'm still skeptical because, not because I think they're going to necessarily break their promise. I understand and appreciate that they're doing everything they can to, you know, meet that commitment. Um, but obviously I'm a little bit concerned that the, uh, uh, that the numbers still don't add up, as I said, right? And, and look, don't get me wrong, right? I would, I would be, you know, happy if we got level local aid. But there are two things that I didn't hear tonight. First of all, Carolyn, I think, was, was more candid in saying cuts might have to be considered, right? So I think that, you know, anybody that walked out of there and said they didn't hear the word cuts, they did hear the word cuts. Carolyn said it twice, as a matter of fact. Right? Only, and even, only Carolyn said it, though. Yes. Oh, oh, no, no. Aaron did refer to it at the end where she said a third, a third, a third, right? Oh. She said, right? When I, when I asked her about FY22, she said, you that know. That was 22, she, right. But she seemed very committed to maintaining yes. the, the, the flat local aid. And, and uh, that's why I said I appreciate that. I just don't know if I, I, as I said, I hate sounding like a doomsday guy. But to me, I'm data driven and I don't see the data to support getting there yet. Now, I could be wrong and I will go to that meeting on the 7th, like I did in April, to hear what they say about the rep, because that'll, that'll tell you right there. If they come in and they say, hey, it's still $6 billion. You know, if they look and say, hey, the economy is recovering a little better, we think it's going to be much less, then I might feel a little bit easier. But How do you raise revenue? She said there are ways to raise well, revenue. Raise taxes. Well, right. raise taxes, raise taxes, or what I'm, what I'm more worried about is that they're going to, they would end up filling it with a bond bill. Like they, they bond it to raise money in the current fiscal year. And then, you know, basically in, in a backhand, they have to balance a budget, but they do it in a backhanded way by taking on debt to do it. Right. Right. So, so yes, it's not like the federal government where they can just print money and run debts for deficits forever, but it is in essence, running a deficit budget and just filling it with a bond offering. You, it you, raise, you, you can raise $3 billion in the, in the debt markets and, and pay it off over 20 years or however, you know, however long, and it just impacts the future years by that amount. And you just are. Right. You know. Right. And that's, and that's, and that's fine. But that's, you know, again, you know, the, the only concern I have is, as you said, it impacts future years. And it obviously it's less because you're not taking the whole thing in one year, blah, blah, blah. But that's also why I raised FY22 and saying, look, even if you do, through some means, you know, handle this, let's say they do bond it out, right? Let's say the revenue is shortfall, they use all the rainy day fund, they bond out the difference, right? Well, now you're going into FY22 with no rainy day fund and a bond payment, right? So, so to me, you know, as I said, right, you can, you can pretend that nothing has changed fiscally for only so long before you have to face the fiscal reality, right? And if your hope is, okay, well, we're just going to keep on a flat trajectory and hope that you know, somebody comes and shovels in a bunch of money to fill it back up, fill the trough back up. That's great, but but right now I don't see how that's going to happen in a time frame that's going to help us. I will say that I bet on the seventh. Uh, we'll get uh, employment numbers at the end of this week for, for August, but my, my for September. My, my guess is that that you know the employment picture has looked better than, than anyone was sort of expecting in April or May. Um, yeah, yeah. So my guess is maybe they're going to say it's less, it's less than the, the five to six billion. Mm -hmm. um, just the economic stuff. It seems like we have rebounded a little bit stronger. But the problem is we've also plateaued, and uh, well, we plateaued, and now we're starting to kick up again. If you look at the national trend, no, no, but I just mean plateaued as far as a little hump, and now we're the economic rate. Right. So I, I think that there's a risk that they actually come in and say it's looking better than in fact actually what ends up happening is the underlying problems are actually being masked. Yeah. going back to work, and that it, it will. It'll, resurrect themselves you know, next year. Well, but, well, the other question, and maybe this is for you, Dan, as the banker, right, is to what extent is the kind of normalcy that's returned in some sense to the economy, to some fraction of the economy, strictly due to the influx of money in the Fed stimulus? In other words, you know, it's like, it's like the Fed has been flooding the markets with cash, has been bar lending money to everybody who wants it, 
you know, you had the unemployment stuff that ran out at the end of July, then you had Trump throwing 300, right? The other concern I have is that everybody's going to do what you said and say, look, hey, look, it's not as bad as I thought, but we've got a whole bunch of sticks propping it up right now. And those sticks are one by one going to go away. The Fed can't keep funneling billions of dollars into private companies to prop them up. The, you know? the, hope, the hope is basically that you can bridge it to the vaccine and then sort of, you know, keep it on life support to the vaccine and then you, you, uh, you know, paddle it and the vaccine comes out and everyone kind of. Dan, you're breaking yeah, up. You're breaking up. What do you? What underlying damage did you do in the, in the end? Yeah. And, and no one can really know that. But you, you have seen people unemployed for greater than 26 weeks is, is, is to rise rapidly. There is a, is, is a real underlying Yeah, well, damage. well, well. the end of September, right? The end of September. For anybody that was laid off in, at the end of March, let's say, right? When the lockdown started in mid-March or whatever, their unemployment's running out at the end of September. Right, so you're seeing people who haven't been called back. I mean, it, 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 the question is just what kind of lasting damage did, did was done, and and the the, the snapback may have been a little quicker with with people who called back to work sooner. But anyway, yeah. Okay, so we'll see. So, so anyway, so that that's that's you know that's why I said for FY20. So the, so with regards to the free cash, right? We're we're gonna have this four hundred eighty four thousand from the overlay that was released from the overlay reserve, right? Um, Travis's preference is to um, take 400 of that and put it into uh, you know, restore stabilization, basically, right off the top. Now, you know, when you think about it, it really doesn't matter whether you say it came from that or from free cash. At this point, knowing that free cash is 2.7 million, you know. 2.654. Right, 2.654. Yeah, so. come on. Let's okay. go all the way up. So let's say 3 million total, right? Roughly 3 million total yep. we have between those two things. 3.1. 3.1, okay. Now, Obviously, the, the the free cash is one time is not operational, right? It should be used for one time, you know, one time expenses. Mm -hmm. Now, we can do a couple of things, and again, we don't have to decide tonight, but just to, to start the discussion, do we want to, you know, Dan, you've mentioned, you know, taking some of that to uh, lower the tax rate a little bit to give people a, a tax, you know, a better tax bill um, for the next few quarters to try to help with the pandemic in terms of people suffering economically. Um, I do agree that doing that would probably do a hell, have a hell lot more impact than the the rent the mortgage and rent relief thing that that they're doing. Um, but then, of course, I think we all agree priority one is restoring stabilization and restoring capital, capital to where it was. Because remember, we cut capital, which by which so may be, there's going to be some articles, right? Some of the capital also are actually articles, so it may be that you sort of split that up. But yeah, my my thing is just stabilization 400, 500 for for. for um, Capital yeah. slash the other things that's nine hundred. You know, maybe you put an extra million in the capital expenditure fund or somewhere to sort of help pay for the coverage of the. Of well, that's what I was going to say. Do we want water treatment plan? Yeah. Return five hundred uh, to the uh, taxpayers. And the no. Remainder, what? I don't think we sh should return because how much is it going to be? I, I, a hundred bucks a person. I mean, a hundred bucks a resident. I mean, it's, yeah. Anyway, it, just assume roughly five five thousand residences. In this town. is my recommendation: return, you return, you, you lower taxes for a year, and then um, the remainder, uh, you find somewhere to sort of put it. Maybe just let it run. That will be there to sort of assist the schools or anyone in the second half of the, the, the fiscal year uh, if you don't get any additional money. Well, well, that's that's okay. So, so here's what I would say about that. Is that one time um, still? Right, right. But but that's the um, the question is the it depends on when they're going to need the money right because if they are going to let's say the schools need you know a million dollars in the spring for whatever reasons for COVID related expenses okay um, the only way they could get that after our next town meeting would be through the reserve fund right so what you're saying is we'd have to bolster reserve fund to over a million bucks or something like that which again. You know, at town meeting, the justification would be that this this gives us that the, the schools have anticipated a million dollars in expenses, and we need to have the million. But we're replacing so we it. With we appropriate free cash in May from the prior year's free cash, or does it become next? No, so we can we can appropriate it in May. But the issue is, when do they need it? Right? Mm -hmm. They're going to need it before May. No, 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 no. Yeah. Their their budget is thirty five million dollars. Hmm. They will have more than yeah, six hundred right thousand. They will have more than six or seven thousand dollars in, in money left for the last month and a half yeah Theor theoretically the only problem is that we have to delay may again for some reason 
Uh, well, this is why I want to get rid of that provision, right? Because I don't think at this point there's any reason to delay May. But I'm just saying, theoretically, then you could. You could yeah. But I, I, I do believe that they probably have some money in some place where they could actually kind of use it for a little while and we could restore it or. or, or, or I don't think Dan, you're, you're fading again. Every time you, I don't know what, your mic sucks. That's on the recording now, so. I think that there would be certain people uh, in the town that would not do it favorably if we just simply put the money into their What? Oh, yeah. I didn't hear what he said. If I don't, I think that there would be certain opposition if we took the excess and put it into the reserve for us to use later in the right. year. Yeah, I agree. Right. Unless okay. we have a that's specific fine. thinking that we're concerned about the schools or we're right. that's what because like, yeah, we have they're to banking on getting money from the feds, but I don't hear that unless you guys have heard something that, well, well, we're going to, we're expecting X amount of dollars additional for a year, half the second half of the year. Mm. Yeah. Well, 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 the thing is that if, you know, right now we have this, I mean, technically speaking, and I'll be, I'll be anal because we have the money, right? Um, Technically speaking, we would want to make the reserve fund uh, seven third seven fifteen, right? Because we were at three fifteen. Like we talked about restoring capital, restoring stabilization. We took four hundred from stabilization to boost yep. it up to six hundred. So we technically cut reserve by one hundred and fifteen. So that's why I said technically, what we could do is say we're going to bring it up to six fifteen. I mean seven fifteen, which is four hundred thousand above our normal run rate, and that's that's to cover COVID related expenses. And then leave the rest, as you said, that 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 should give us more than enough margin to deal with the schools if they're running tight. We, as you said, May, we could be able, we could adjust further. But I'm saying like if their expenses were huge early on and we said, holy crap, they're not going to make it till May, we'd have enough money there to to make them whole or, you know, to be able to deal with it until we get to May. Right. And to be honest with you, right, the, the, the as I emphasized the town meeting, right, putting money in the reserve fund doesn't spend it and also doesn't allow us to have but we do we have statutory obligations on how it has to be spent so it isn't a slush fund it isn't just hey we just can spend it on whatever we want it's got to be unanticipated the whole bit right the statute is very clear on what we can use it for so it's not like we're saying hey create this budget and just put a bunch of money in it and right. just you know it's not writing it's a fincom budget we're all we have to do is vote it which by the way not speaking of fy21 okay can somebody do something just very quickly for me? Because I think we did this already, but I couldn't find it. So I want to do it for the record. Um, somebody make a motion that we pay our ATFC dues for FY21 in the amount of $210. I make a motion to spend $220 for the dues. 210. 210. Yes. Okay. So move for a second. Okay. Uh, let's take a quick vote on that. Uh, any further debate on that? Your procedure vote, Mr. Alfred? Aye. Mr. Whitaker? Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Ms. Zemer. Yes. I actually don't remember doing that. So. Well, I thought I know we did it for FY20 late in the year, but then yep. I thought I got the bill like a week later and did this one. But then I said to Sharon, I'm pretty sure we approved it, but she said I I don't know. Go three minutes. And then she said I'll just pay it as soon as you. And I said I'll just do a confirmatory vote anyway, just to make sure we're we're covered. So now we're covered because I had that right in front of me for that reason. So. Um, Okay, so so we'll talk more about the plans for the free cash, but start thinking about that in terms of which way we're we're going to go. You know, Travis is going to have his own ideas, I think, for what what's going. You know, he, you know, the one kind of um, administrative thing to be careful about, uh, which I know Travis is aware of, is you know our capital expenditure fund, technically speaking, cannot be used on anything that can't be bonded. Which is right. why we couldn't do like a senior center repairs, things like that, right? So, I have myself concerns about things like a sidewalk study. It's one thing if you say we're gonna we're gonna pay for design plans as part of an approved, like the water treatment plant for. I mean, it doesn't and apply to water, that's but gonna, that's gonna be an article. That's gonna be an, yeah. an, an article, and that's part. Of, that was what I was saying. The five hundred that we would sort of put capital. Would necessarily go to the, go to the, it would be part free of cash. He's gonna hey, he has it as a separate article. Right, that's and what I was gonna say. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna take the study money from free cash, and that's because I told him I don't think you can fund it out of capital. Yeah. So <clears throat> if that's the case, and that's fine. But then we have to. I would separate that from capital and say, if we if we cut capital by you know whatever it was four hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, that we at least restore that amount, 
and then use some free cash for the state. In other words, I wouldn't count, because that's not technically capital, I wouldn't count that as restorative monies for the capital expenditure fund. So anyway, think about that. We'll talk about that next week. We'll get into the meat of it because we'll, we'll either have to next week because town meeting will be on the 26th or we'll have a little more time because it'll be moved to whenever they move it to. But, you know, the warrant will be final and, and we'll, be, we'll be able to start, I think, chunking through it. We don't have that much stuff for this fall. And as you heard from our legislators, we're not going to, you know, they're telling us bank on level local aid, but frankly, um, we don't need to do that. So I'm, I'm not going to recommend spending any of the potential additional local aid that we might have. Um, you know, in the worst case, worst case, best case slash, you know, quote unquote, where the feds come through and there's, and local aid state does stay steady, right? That's just more free, you know, more, more free cash for next year or lower tax rate for next year. So. Oh, did you see an email just came from Travis? Twelve five. They decided to move town meeting from. Stop. I'm sorry. I pressed the button and uh, Saturday lost. twelve five. Saturday twelve five at one p.m. Why okay, so late? We now have a little more time. Why? What? So late? Why so late? Yeah, it is because of probably because of Thanksgiving, right? But I, I agree. I don't. Know no, my that. guess is because they want the governance committee to have bylaw recommendations. Yes, I know that's probably what they want to do. Let me, uh, I, let me check something. Here. So check the calendar. So December fifth. Okay. Okay. That'll be fun. Um, at one p.m. at the high school auditorium. Okay, that's actually not bad because I think that if we can have it safely. Um, you know, obviously we could fit enough people in there, I think. The question is, are they going to have overflow and what's the seating going to be like? What's the spacing going to be like for, because I don't know what the capacity is normally of that auditorium. It's obviously high. Or yeah, so so if you figure you do every fourth or fifth seat, you still get 200 in there roughly. So that might be good. We'll see. Okay. Um, so, okay, anything else on FY21? Nope. Okay, now we, we have obviously less, now we've got a little time, so we'll talk about the warrant and stuff. But, Okay, number seven is this, the warrant. Obviously, the warrant the, the things just got moved. But I'll confirm with Travis is whether the date for the closure of the warrant is going to get moved or whether they're going to close it on October 1 and then just have the meeting later. Um, no, because that's probably leave it open so they can get the governance committee. So, well, no, they can. The, the select board, there are two things that I, I think you know, need to be understood. One is if it's open, then petition articles must be allowed, right? In other words, you know, by our bylaws, right? So, so if, if the warrant's still open and somebody wants to submit a petition article, no, um, but the other thing is that they can. This, special what? Time it's hundred signatures for special town meeting. What? It's a hundred signatures for special town meeting. I thought you couldn't have a petition article. And... No, you can. It's just in the in the spring, it's ten signatures. In the fall, it's a hundred are needed. Okay. So, so realistically, you don't get petitions in the fall because you don't get a hundred people. Right. Okay. I knew there was now, something in the fall. In the fall now, now there is one thing that would be interesting, and and I'll just throw this out there. Uh, you know, I mentioned this at our prior meeting. Uh, I would like to see a bylaw change to not allow bylaw changes at a, at a special town meeting. That was in our bylaws for many many years until a provision was added in 1995 to allow the select board only to add bylaw changes as special. Um, but I. Personally, given this whole governance committee thing, I'd like to take that away, not because I'm trying to limit the power of select board, but because of the situation of this has opened my eyes, at least to the idea of you really shouldn't have bylaw changes at a town meeting where you typically only get 120 people, right? Town town meeting in May, if you look pre-COVID, the attendance at town meeting, the May town meeting is, is almost, it's like 40% higher on average than fall and that's including two fall town meetings where there were controversial things that boosted attendance, like the, like the, uh, uh, the school start time last year, right? Last year we had 400 for special town meeting because of start times, but every other town meeting before that hadn't been above like 200, right? So even if you include those spikes, there were two spikes in the last like five years, the, the attendance at the May town meeting is, runs at least 30 to 40% higher. So I would think that that for the, for the town's purposes, they're, they're really, I was trying to think of why would, why would there be a need for the select board to do bylaw changes on any kind of, you know, kind of emergency basis that couldn't wait till May, and I couldn't think of anything. So, 
Because there aren't. Yeah. All right. So, so, so is that, um, so, so that's it. Uh, unless anybody has anything else they want to wrap up with, well, we don't have any discussion on town meeting other than the fact that dates change. So we'll have to replan that. So, uh, okay. Motion. Anybody have anything else you want to add before we close for this evening? Motion nope. to adjourn. Second. Okay. That's not subject to debate. So we'll proceed immediately to a vote. Mr. Alfred. Yes. Mr. Whitaker. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Ms. Zemer. Yes. And I vote yes. That concludes the Tuesday, September 29th, uh, meeting of the Finance Committee. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, we may or may not be meeting next Tuesday, depending on what I find out about town meeting, because if the warrant's not closed and things like that, we may not, uh, there's no business we may not meet. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. But for tonight, we're done. So thank you and good night. Good night.